got pins, got buttons, I've got magnets, I've got bigger buttons, stickers. Hey, it's Remy, fresh back from Aquashella. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today, and we are also going to explore one of the standout tanks at Aquashella Dallas. Are you ready? Let's go. What is up, coral people? If you are new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. On the road to 25,000 subscribers before the end of 2022. So if you could, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. The number one comment that I received at Aquashella Dallas was, whoa, you're a lot taller than I thought. And I don't know, I guess I'm always sitting, but like, I don't, does this, I don't know if this makes any difference. I'm, I'm, I'm six foot three, if that helps. But apparently I look a lot shorter on camera. Aquashella Dallas was great, so many people. And if we met, like if we had an opportunity to talk, hang out, thank you so much for coming up and saying hi. It's really, really fun to connect with people at all the conventions. So I gotta know, we're about halfway through the year, maybe a little over halfway through the year. What's an awesome coral that you picked up this year? Maybe it was at Aquashella Dallas, maybe it was at a convention, maybe it was at your local fish store. Did you get a good deal on it? What was it? Is it a coral you've been dying to have? Let me know in the comment section below. I didn't get any coral from Aquashella Dallas and honestly, I didn't really get anything. I usually pick up a piece from Nori Vossen. She's got an amazing uh, collection here. Let me show you just, I've shown you this before, but this is the golden assessor I've got in the lagoon. And one of my favorites is the juvenile emperor angel. Oh, what an awesome fish. I had one of those at one point when I have a fish only system or a larger system down the road, definitely going back in. But uh, she does all this by hand. It's beautiful, it's beautiful stuff. I will link everything below because I'm a little upset. I totally forgot to get back over and get something from her. But that's what's cool about Aquashella because not only is there coral, not only is there uh, reptiles and fresh water and all that kind of stuff, there's also art. There's so much great art that you can use to put up in your, in your fish room or in your coral studio, whatever you got. I digress. I will say that the event did light a fire under my butt to get this stuff moved out of here because I'm so inspired and so ready to start up the new tank. Today I wanted to feature a little bit different of a tank. Hopefully we'll give you some inspiration by a guy who we met in Orlando. His name is Jonathan and last time he did a really cool dwarf seahorse tank. So if you haven't checked out that video, you got to check that out after you're done with this one. This time he did a macro algae tank with some really cool critters inside. I'll let him explain. Let's go back to Aquashella. All right, we found our good friend, Jonathan Buttkiss again. Hey there. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, we're having fun this weekend. Uh, it's Aquashella Dallas. So, uh, you know, of course, we're doing the Aqua Gallery here. So we're having fun with a, a whole variety of different tanks. You love macro algae, right? I do, I do. You did a seahorse tank last time. This is your baby this time. Tell us what, tell us what you did. So what we have here today is we've got a, a 24 gallon all-in-one macro algae tank. The main concept behind this was I just wanted to show people kind of how easy and also how much of a transition there is and uh, similarities between freshwater planted tanks and marine planted tanks, so to speak, right? Or marine algae tanks is a better way, right? I just wanted to create something that was a little bit more of like a triangular layout. So you start on a little bit of a higher uh, pitch on the right side of the tank and just kind of escaped it with the rockwork angling down and um, really just wanted to showcase the beauty of some of the macro algaes that are available. Um, and uh, once again, uh, Seahorse Savvy provided us with all the macro algaes and the fish and the invertebrates for this display. Um, and uh, they did a wonderful job selecting some of the macros uh, for me to use. Um, I think a lot of people, when they come up here, they're like, I didn't know that algae came in all those different shapes. Can you take us through the different species that are in here? Yeah, yeah, so there's a couple different types. Um, or quite a few actually. We've got a couple different species of uh, Gracilaria. 
Um, there's Grassalaria Hayai, which is probably one of my favorites. It just nice, stays really nice and compact and bushy. Um, and it's also a great beginner uh, macro to kind of start with if you're just getting started with uh, macroalgae tanks and such. We also have some of the, uh, um, the shaving brush uh, macros that come from the Keys as well too. So we have a couple different species of those. Palmidia as well, two different types. So what I did is basically uh, use the larger size in the back and kind of tapered it off with some of the smaller species as you get further down on that triangular escape just to kind of uh, get a sense of scale a little bit more or play around with that at least. Kind of applying some of the, like the aquascaping, freshwater aquascaping concepts to uh, marine macroalgae tank. Of course, we got some mermaids fans as well too. Um, those are just always one of those classic go-to algaes that looks really neat, is very characteristic of macroalgae tanks. We also even have some thick branching coralline algae too. Uh, Fish-wise, we have just a pair of the uh, white spotted file fish from ORA. So I believe these were captive raised and uh, yeah, they're, they're cool. They don't get very large, so it's a, it's a great fit because this is only a 24 gallon tank. Unlike some of the other filefish species out there that get quite large or have very distinct appetites for certain species. Most of the filefish, I mean, smaller species, generally are pretty bland for the most part. But these guys have some unique patterns on them, I feel, with the white spots that it's, it's nice. It contrasts, when you have such bright macroalgaes, right? It's almost kind of nice having something that's a little more subdued in color, but the pattern is still there, right? And speaking of patterns, as far as invertebrates go, we do have these really neat lettuce nudibranchs in here as well too. And it's really neat because Kapila and Alyssa had sent quite a few of them and they all have slightly different colors to them. Some are a little bit more of a lime green, some are a little bit more of like a, uh, uh, like a seafoam green. So add some texture and variety there as well too, even though they're all the same species. They do eat algae, but I believe they only eat it they don't, they don't eat it at such a fast pace that's really gonna affect, like with, with macroalgae tank, you know, with proper growth, you're gonna be growing just as fast or if not faster than they would be able to keep up and, and munch it down. So if anything, they're helping with nuisance allergies, they're helping with uh, keeping some of your allergies trimmed for you, so maybe it keeps down the maintenance a little bit. And those, I uh, believe we also have a pom-pom crab in here somewhere, but uh, in typical pom-pom crab fashion, probably wait until uh, dusk to come out. And, so Aqualife makes these wonderful tanks where you have the back chambers, you can put whatever media you want in there. So I just put some uh, polishing pads in the back here. You've got your heater in the back and such as well too. And then of course we went with a Owase Optimax aquarium pump. So it's a general utility pump. Again, those are really nice because you have the actual control on the actual unit itself. So I was actually lowered it down for the first day just so when we were acclimating all the animals, you know, it wasn't blowing them around. And now that they're a little bit more comfortable on the second day, I was able to kick it up a little bit to get the proper flow that's needed for a tank like this. And of course, we've got uh, you know a light that's currently set at around 65K, which is the cool thing about macroalgae tanks is you really don't need anything super crazy or involved like you do sometimes with you know higher end reef tanks or more demanding corals and stuff like that. A simple planted tank full spectrum light is perfectly fine for most macroalgae. We have one of uh, Aqualife's new uh, LED pendants on the top here. Um, which we just have set to a very basic, you know, standard uh, 65K spectrum. When you're snorkeling or diving and, you know, anything less than 30 feet of water, you know, you still have all that spectrum that has not been lost to the depth of the water yet. So it's just, to me, it, it's more natural. And I think with, you know, me coming primarily from the, the, the freshwater side and, you know, I spend a lot of time out in creeks and in, in, in nature, um, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of the more natural look. Um, and even corals for that matter too. I, I really do enjoy seeing corals underneath more of a, uh, you know, a, a warm light spectrum as opposed to the, the cold blues and such. Pretty much all the tanks in the center aisle here are up for auction, um, so it's silent auction style. In the past, we've, we've donated the money to charity and such, conservation programs, things of that nature. So the Aqua Gallery in general um, is sponsored by Owase and uh, Aqualife. And the purpose of this is to get people involved in seeing what you can do in the hobby, what's possible. As you walk around, you'll see freshwater planted tanks, scape tanks, uh, paludarium style tanks, macroalgae tanks, little reef tanks, gorgonian tanks. So we try to keep a fresh breadth of different types of, of aquariums to inspire and uh, get people interested. You know, a lot of us come from certain niches or we all start somewhere, right? And I think one of the coolest things that, about this hobby is just constantly being able to to see new things being done and just learn about all the other niches that are out there. 
and every niche you can get really hardcore into. You can really just lose yourself in the, the research, the fun of, of figuring out how to set up a tank like that. So all the scapers that have put these tanks up are floating around so, uh, you know, attendees of the show can come by and ask questions and, uh, you know, start, start thinking about what their next tank is going to be like, right? Well, thank you, Jonathan. We appreciate your time and can't wait to see what you come up with next. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll see you at one of the feature shows. I want to thank Jonathan for always being willing to share his amazing creations with us. My goal when I show these kinds of tanks or when I feature these kinds of tanks is to inspire you to maybe go down a different route when it comes to coral and reefing because we've seen mixed reef tanks we've seen sps and lps dominant and zoanthid tanks and all that but it's a rare occasion when you see something like a macro algae tank in someone's home so really cool critters inside with the file fish and the, the lettuce nudies and the pom-pom crab that we didn't see and macro tanks are pretty maintenance free i don't really have to do much to either of my macro tanks uh, Calerpa has taken over in my macro tanks, but that can all be trimmed back and it just gives a really natural look to the room. Now, I do have another video that I started while I was at Aquashella about one coral that I've always heard about, but I've never actually seen in person. It's a very expensive coral and one that's kind of elusive and has mystery around it, and somebody had it at Aquashella Dallas, and that will be featured in the next video. Before I get out of here, one more reminder to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. A huge thanks to Fritz for sending me to Aquashella. I had fun speaking. I was on the live stream for a little bit. Always a great time. Just want to say thank you to Fritz. Aquashella Chicago will be here before you know it, so make sure to get your tickets at Aquashella.com. In Dallas, I got to hang out with a great friend of mine. You may know him. You may love him. Scott Crow, OSA, still rocking and rolling. Had a little heart to heart with him. Everything seems to be going really, really great at OSA. All the videos they're pumping out on YouTube, all the social media, go check them out when you get a chance. OSA or Ocean State Aquatics. You may have seen this at the beginning of the video, but I just, I don't know what to do with these. Like, I bought them because they look cool. I really like these pins. These pins are pretty awesome. Um, magnets. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I was thinking about packing them together and maybe just like, I don't know, like eight bucks shipped or something like that and just to cover costs on both ends. So it's worthwhile for both of us, but I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Maybe I'll set something up and in the next video, you know, I can send these off to you or something. So school starts next week. Oh yeah. That means no kids in the house during the day is going to be awesome and quiet. I might nap a little more. Might spend more time down here doing stuff back there. I lost the light, so that means it's time to go. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Have a great night or day or morning or, I don't know, whenever you're watching this video. Just thank you and subscribe and, okay, bye.